yesterday, the betting wasn't great. Though, more importantly, Iron won. I treated this game like the Scotland match. The Poisson analysis had flagged that it was going to be a low scoring game and so on. But in, it ended up being a 2 all draw. So I thought, okay, it's saying the same thing for the wales Ireland match. So there's probably greater risk of it being something like a 2 all draw. And so I proceeded along those lines. Now these are these were higher odds bets so I would reduce my bet size which means that if I lose I don't lose much and if I win I win so I'm happy so that was a loss but as I said a small loss in Serbia Georgia I thought the that it was going to outperform on the high side. That Serbia are... It looked like it was going to be a two-goal victory for Serbia. I thought Serbia were going to even do better than that. As it happened, Serbia won 1-0. So this website said to back Georgia with a two-goal handicap. So it would have won that bet, but it lost... The both teams to score and some other bets so broadly everyone oh and in the Ireland match this website said to back um, the McLean to, sc to score or it, it got the correct goal scorer but it also most of its bet most of the bets it lost so that was yesterday Today, though, there is better value. The main takeaway for me has been that if it's the last game in the group and one of the teams has already qualified, so it doesn't really care, it doesn't matter, they're more, they're basically going to play in second gear. That they know it doesn't make any difference. So... Yes, in the end, Serbia won. Yes, in the end, England won. But it didn't. they didn't need to win 3-0 or something like that because it makes no difference. Today's games, though, that's not the case. Like, it, it, uh, it, it, that's not going to matter because people have something to play for. So in today's group, we have France versus Belarus and Sweden versus Netherlands. So France are top of the group, but if Sweden win, they, could, they can go above them. So that means that France want to win. They have to win. If you don't win, you end up having to go to a playoff and they might have to play Italy. So... And that just means you have to play more games. It's just not what you want to do. Sweden-Netherlands is very interesting because Netherlands are going through a crisis that they didn't qualify for the Euros. They don't really have a super talented generation coming through. Their top talent are kind of old that they should be the near retirement if not they maybe have another year or so left i mean that they're not uh they're not in the middle of their careers so basically again as usual we can get the numbers from here plug them into the Poisson model and see whether we get any value so this is the Netherlands Sweden game the parameters for that and the bet is 
the away team to win. Typically, the home team wins half the time. And it's a draw, and the away team wins 25% of the time. So you normally get good odds for the away team to win, since they, um, they don't tend to win. Now, again, this I'm the way I'm using the Poisson distribution. I'm just looking at the total goals. So, when I looked at uh, trying to predict league games where there are more games, I would use data for the how many ga- goals the home team scores at home on average for my parameter. While here, I'm using the average. So this model has no idea of home and away. It it doesn't treat them differently. While we know in reality, the away team uh, wins rarely. So that's, that's the risk factor here. But I'm, I hap- I'm willing to take that risk. Again, because we get good odds. So that means that we only need to make a very small bet to win uh, a unit of bet, or to, ma- to, to make a decent amount of money. So here, Sweden are the up and coming team. I think they're going to have three or more goals. I think they're going to, the Sweden are going to win. I'm also going for the away team to win and overs. So there I'm having the minimum, minimal size bet. But you, the odds are something like five to one. So um, that's still, uh, that's a, if I lose it, I lose a very small amount. If I win it, happy days. It's saying Sweden to win. They're going for 3-2. I think it was more, it wasn't that high scoring in, from the Poisson model. This could be because, you know, it is the final game of the group. So there could be something more like the uh, Sweden or the, or the Scotland last match effect going on where people will throw caution to the wind that Netherlands will not want to lose at home. Uh, Netherlands can attack, their attack is good, but their defence is vulnerable. So that might actually turn out to be a very interesting bet. And that's 33 to 1. So that's always a tempter. I mean, that even if you put in a couple of euro, that, that, that nearly gets to 100 quickly. Both teams to score and over two and a half goals are very likely to happen so this might this is also not a bad bet since i i mean i I expect netherlands to score and them to concede so the i i wouldn't disagree with these bets for france belarus I'll look at what these guys say first and then I'll look at what the model says. They're saying France to win and over three and a half goals. And they're saying France to win 5-0. I'm taking nearly the opposite. So France to win is 86%. So yes, I agree France are going to win. But the odds are rubbish. It's like 1.1. So I wouldn't I don't I wouldn't recommend making that bet. Likewise I I like the France to win to nil. 75% because uh, Belarus's defense is very weak and they barely score. France's defense is very strong and their attack is very strong. So I expect France to win to nil, but the odds are rubbish. Again, I mean, France to win to nil is something like 1.2. I mean, there's, there's, 
barely any returns there. Now they're saying and over three and a half goals. Well, here, based on the scoring rate of France and Belarus, it's expecting more like a 2 0. So I've actually bet less than three and a half goals. So I've bet under three and a half goals. I actually got odds of 2.22. Now they've fallen back to 2.14. I'm also I also have orders so you can what you can do on Betfair is say when the odds fall back to like 1.4 or 1.3 I'll be the bookie I'm happy to take bets of that there are going to be less than four goals so I mean imagine if it was nil all at half time then everyone thinks the chances of it of there being four or more goals is or sorry the ch- basically the if there's if it's nil all at half time the the probability the the odds that we're not going to have four goals has shot up so people are ha- happy to bet and get only pay, get paid only 1.3 at that stage because in order to have four goals you it is you need to be scoring at a good rate so if i am able to hedge these bets if france basically score uh, one goal at, by half time that doesn't look like they're going to score four goals i'll be able to hedge out and then even if they end up scoring four goals, you know, put it piling on the pressure near the end, then I still I still win money because by that stage I've hedged these. I get paid eleven euro for the counter bet, so I win either way. You can tweak these. I could take the bet at one point five or something, you know. So uh, that's just trial and error. So that's the end of the series looking at the World Cup qualifiers. I'll have to update things and try and take into account the fact that if it's the last game in the group and one of the teams is has already qualified that remember they're going to be playing in second gear that they they don't go all out. So that changes the behavior of the teams otherwise i like the website because it, it gives lots of information m- more details about the specific uh, teams which i otherwise didn't know um and still happy that uh, ireland won